Good evening, FRC friends. Tonight we celebrate communion together under the auspices of your elders, and uh, I am delighted to be here. Although I have to admit uh, there's a touch bit of disappointment, um, your worship uh, planning team had planned to host a Seder tonight had uh, we been in uh, non-COVID times, <laughs> and we were going to have this beautiful Seder meal with all of us and uh, walk you through the Jewish Passover and see its connections to Christ. So disappointed we can't pull that off this evening, but I'm gonna do a little teaching from uh, from the Seder, from the Jewish Passover and, and show you how it points to Christ. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we come before you on this evening, Maundy Thursday, the night in which you gathered your disciples together and you celebrated the Passover that great Old Testament salvific event. And then you showed how that event pointed to you. And you turned it from the Seder, the Old Testament Passover, into the communion, our Lord's Supper. Tonight we celebrate that before you. We come to you in need of spiritual nutrition. Bless this time together. And we thank you for the wonders of modern technology that allow us to be together, even though right now, physically, we need to be apart. In Jesus' name, amen. So just a reminder, uh, gather your household now. Um, if the kids are in the household, I'd, I'd appreciate if you'd gather them too. I think, uh, I think this is a friendly event for kids. And uh, under your auspices, mom and dad, your kids are welcome to participate in the communion if they can recognize the body and the blood of Christ in this, in this event. Uh, the objects that you will need for tonight, you'll need a bowl with, with water and a towel. You'll also need juice of some sort or something to represent the blood of Christ. And then you'll also need something to represent the body of Christ. In this case tonight, I'm using uh, club crackers. Uh, you use what, what it is that you want to use. Um, our reading begins, our scripture reading begins in John chapter 13. This is just before the Passover. We read, it was just before the Passover feast and Jesus knew the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. Now he's gonna show them the full extent of his love by going to the cross but preceding that showing, he's going to give a couple of signs. The first has to do with the bowl of water and the towel, and the second has to do with the Passover meal. Here we go. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So, he got up from the meal, he took off his outer clothing, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Here's what I'd like you to do with that basin. Whoever is uh, the patriarch of your household that's gathered there this evening, or, or the matriarch, if, if you represent uh, your household as the, the spiritual leader, would you please take that bowl of water now and get down in your, on your knees in front of the youngest, remove his or her shoes and socks, put the feet in the water, begin to wash the feet. Go slowly. It's a little awkward at first. We are not used to this. But go slowly. Let your fingers move between the toes and make sure to, to clean every crevice of the feet. In ancient times, this was done for several reasons. One, it was a way to cleanse the feet after walking all day on dusty roads. Um, so there was a cleansing piece to it. But there was also a refreshment piece and a hospitality piece to it, to have your feet washed by another after being covered with dirt and grime all day and then to have them be wonderfully clean and, and air drying. It just, it, just, it just felt right and good. 
Now, I realize that some of you are gathered solo this evening and are maybe listening in on a phone call connected to a, a household who is, who is doing this. So I'm just going to invite you to just simply wash your hands and go slowly. You know how these 20-second hand washings seem so slow in this, this age of COVID? I want you to double or triple that very slowly. Now, all of you may need to turn off the tape for a moment so you can so you can go around the room and wash everybody's feet. Once the matriarch or patriarch is done washing the feet in the circle of relatives that you have gathered, if, uh, if the, the second uh, oldest would then please wash that person's feet. Take your time, no hurry. We're not trying to be quick in this. So turn off the camera for a moment and go to it. Wash each other's feet. For Jesus and for his disciples, there was, uh, well, but for this, his disciples, there was some resistance to this. And there might even be some resistance in the room where you are this evening. This is weird. Or I don't want this. Or, ooh, I've never done this before. Jesus encountered resistance from one of the disciples. Here's what we read. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Now, his resistance isn't that he was creeped out by someone washing his feet. Peter was used to the washing of feet ritual in his day but what he was unused to was that the greatest among them was the one washing the other's feet usually it was the servant of the household who would wash your feet it was the the least among you who would do the washing and jesus who is obviously the greatest among them is the one who is washing their feet peter says no way and jesus answered unless i wash you you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. His resistance waned and he was washed. Finish up your washing, including the resistant one in your midst. And now we turn to the Seder itself. Remember the Seder is the Old Testament salvation meal that celebrated God bringing his people out of Egypt. It was always celebrated in homes, not in church. So it's actually quite fitting that you are gathered in your homes this evening to celebrate the New Testament salvation event in that the Old Testament salvation party was always celebrated in the home rather than the church. It was a very family-friendly event. Um, families, uh, Jewish families of today tend to dress up for their Passover. It, it's fun, it's festive, it's interactive. Um, kids and adults have various roles in it. Um, there are some games that are played. Usually a big meal is held as part of the Seder, but the main foods of the Seder are largely teaching tools to uh, flesh out what it means that God saved his people from Egypt. They will have a plate called the Seder plate. It'll have a lamb shank bone. It will have a hard boiled egg. It'll have three kinds of, of bitter herbs, largely, largely in the horseradish family. There will be a mixture called, mixture called chiraset, which is a sweet uh, cinnamon, apple, sugar kind of mixture. There is an empty chair at the Passover table. That chair is for Elijah because the word of God says that when Elijah comes, that salvation will be accomplished. There is uh, the Jewish candle holder. Um, so you'll have that beautiful Jewish candle holder that will be on the table and the candles will be lit. 
There will be house cleaning that will go on prior to the Passover. Uh, often the Jewish community uses that kind of their spring cleaning thing. But there's this, this ritual in the midst of, uh, of the dinner where the daddy pronounces the, the house clean, that all of the leaven has been taken out of the house. So these are some of the things that, that go on in the meal. It's very rich teaching. There are four cups of wine that are had throughout the meal. Um, the cups are in accordance with Exodus 6, verses 6 and 7, where we read God say, I will bring them out. That's the cup of sanctification. I will deliver them. That's the cup of praise. I will redeem them. That's the cup of redemption. And I will take them to be my people. That's the cup of Elijah. And so please, if you would fill your cups in preparation for what will come next. Kids participate in the supper through various questions. There's a certain place in, in the Seder feast where kids are to ask the following questions. Why tonight, on this of all nights, do we eat matzo instead, matzos instead of our regular bread? Why tonight do we eat bitter herbs? Why tonight do we um, dip greens into salt water? And why tonight for this meal do we recline on pillows instead of eating in our regular fashion? These questions set up the, uh, the, the patriarch or matriarch at the table being able to go through the, the salvation events that occurred with the plagues and how God brought his people out and broke the back and part of Pharaoh. If you look in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 22, it's in the midst of the celebration of all of this that, uh, that Jesus turns the Passover into communion. I'm going to be reading uh, from the 22nd chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 19. You're welcome to get out your Bibles and follow along or, or read up on it later. We read, And he took bread gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took a cup. Because it was after the supper, we know that it was the cup of redemption because of how things followed in the Seder feast. After supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now, those are familiar words, nothing, nothing seemingly special in those words, and then you hear them from me each time we celebrate communion together. But here's what's going on with he took bread and broke it and gave it to them. The Jews at their Seder feast, Passover feast, have what they call a matzo tosh. Basically, it's a piece of cloth, and it has three compartments, one, two, three and three. The patriarch at the table will take the, the matzo, and matzos are roughly this large. They're square. They have stripes from the, from the cooking process. And he will take three matzos, and he will insert them inside the matzo tosh, which is the matzo bag. The Jews call this the unity. There's various speculation as to what the unity means. There isn't, there are some, some rabbis say that this unity means it's the unity of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Others say it's the unity of worship in the Jewish community with the priests and the Levites and the people. But this unity thing is a bit um, gray in Jewish teaching about the Passover feast. It dangles there. There doesn't seem to be one set explanation. I'm going to suggest to you that this unity is the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Jews already call this the unity, uh, but it gets even more suggestive that it's the Trinity because the patriarch hosting the meal will take the middle matzo and he will break that matzo in half. He will return this half back to the matzo tosh, 
matzo bag, and he will take the other half, and he will take a piece of linen, piece of cloth, usually white. He will wrap that half of the matzo in that cloth, and then that cloth will be buried somewhere, hidden somewhere, somewhere in the room, or or maybe even outside. It then becomes called the afi komen. And Afi Komen literally means the dessert because this will be the last food that will be eaten at the supper. So the patriarch will, will take that. He will hide it somewhere. I'm just for now going to stick it under the chair. But at the very end of the meal, the patriarch will say to the kids at the table, it's time for the Afi Komen. Go and find the Afi Komen. And whoever finds it will get a reward. So the children begin to go in search. Uh, often it's put the same place every year. And usually the older kids defer to the younger child so the younger child could find it. And, the, and then the younger child brings back that which was buried in the strip of cloth to the table and asks for a reward from, from the patriarch. Often the reward given by father is a, a piece of chocolate or maybe a coin or something. But that which was buried, which was broken and buried, has returned to the table. And we read once again, and he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And then he gave it to him, say, them saying, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The matzo tosh, representing the unity of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, containing three matzos, the middle matzo, which is broken, and half of it is buried in strips of cloth for a time till it returns, has now returned to the table and Jesus has given thanks for it. He has broken it. And now he shares it with the disciples. So my friends, at your home, take, eat, and remember and believe that the precious body of the Lord Jesus Christ was broken for a complete remission of all our sins. And then we read in Luke, in the same way after supper, in the same way. What does in the same way mean? Well, he took the Old Testament teaching about the matzos in the matzo tosh, the matzo bag, and he, and he turned that toward his, his body and the sacrifice he was about to be to be made and his burial and then his resurrection and coming back wrapped in the cloth and then that and then that body distributed to the disciples in the same way under the same type of principle of teaching after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you this is the cup of salvation earlier we have had the cup of sanctification, which is, I will bring them out. We have had the cup of praise, which is, I will deliver them. And now we have the cup of redemption, which is, I will redeem them. The cup of salvation. For the Old Testament Jews, it represented being brought out of slavery and into freedom. For us, too. It represents being brought out of slavery from sin and into the joy of salvation in our Lord Jesus Christ. So take, drink, and remember and believe that the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was shed for a complete remission of all of our sins. Thanks be to God.
At this point, the children were invited, the youngest child was invited to go to the door and to call out for Elijah to see if Elijah had arrived yet. Remember when Elijah came, that meant that salvation had come. So the father will call out, is Elijah here? The child, no, Elijah is not here. Well, maybe next year. And the child returns to the table. And, uh, and that concludes the meal. Passover. Now turn communion. By the way, if you ever have, if you ever have opportunity to, uh, to celebrate Passover with an Orthodox Jewish family, do it. You will be amazed at all of the various ways that that Passover points to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Jewish people are often quite receptive to having uh, those who are not uh, of their faith at the table with them. So if you have opportunity, please do it. Well, those are our devotions for this evening. This is the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples for the Passover. Later on, it's the night he will be arrested. Over the course of the evening he, and into the early morning hours, he will be on trial. By morning, he will be with Pilate. And then by midday, he will be hanging from the cross. But he is the Afi Coleman, and his body will return, for he will be raised in three days. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can gather on this sacred evening and remember what you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit did to accomplish our redemption. Father, we thank you that you poured out your wrath for our sins upon Christ. Jesus, we thank you that you were willing to suffer and die. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for making this alive in our hearts. We have celebrated the Holy Supper we give you thanks and honor and glory and praise. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll look forward to seeing you on Easter, 10 a.m. at Drive-In Church. Make sure to share this, uh, this video with, uh, with our shut-ins, okay? Thanks. Bye.